Hi, I'm Steve Adubato, coming to you from the Tisch WNET studios here at Lincoln Center. We are proud to be joined by Dr. Paul Levinson, professor of communication and media studies at Fordham University and author of the book, New New Media. Good to see you, Professor. Same here. Hold on, let me get this straight. There was new media, now there's new new media? What are we talking about? Well, actually, there's a new edition of the book, and I was tempted uh, to call it new, new, <laughs> new media, but I figured enough was enough already. What are we talking about here? We're talking about Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Pinterest, Foursquare, and these media are so new. They come out every year with something brand new. Pinterest, for example, didn't even exist two years ago. You talk about Pinterest. My son, uh, who actually is a student at Fordham, started talking about Pinterest. I said, what are you talking about? And he showed me a whole page that he has. He has a whole bunch of things on there that he created a page. I said, is that a Facebook page? He said, no. Well, I said, what are you talking about? What is, what is that, by the way? You, you find images on the web that you like, yeah. and you post it to your Pinterest page. What people like about it Does is... Does that mean interest? Yes, it's pin, like you pin up your interest. Very clever, right? Okay, now, now here's the question. Let's get right to it. Sure. I'm not going to ask whether it's good, well... You can ask. Good, bad, what? I'll it ask. is what it is? No, it's good. It's not, it's hardly bad at all. It's only bad insofar as you have psychos in life. And when they get online, they can do terrible things. But for most people, it's good. It broadens our intellectual horizons. It allows us to get in touch with old friends, to meet people that we otherwise would never have come to know in the first place. It's never been easier to look something up. You have a question about anything. You post it in your status on Facebook, and within minutes, if you have any number of friends, you'll get an answer. In fact, I talk about that in my book. When I was doing research for the book, I posted a question. Within five minutes, I had an answer from a former student of mine. Mike Plu, who now lives in Japan. See, that's great stuff. I mean, the ability to connect with people you haven't seen for a long time, problem is some of them you don't want to see. Um, but uh, that's a beautiful thing. That's a great thing. And getting pieces of information, connecting with people. Uh, let me tell you where I have some, some concerns. The part um, of the new, new media, social media, that keeps us from this. The part of new, new media and social media that keeps us from the human connection and the dialogue that is face-to-face. -face. You know what I'm talking about. Well, absolutely. Face-to-face -face is essential. We are, after all, flesh and blood beings. But if you think about the people who are watching this, they're not seeing us in the flesh either. And the point is, communication, for the most part, whenever it exists over any distance, that is, whenever two people are not sitting next to each other, as you and I now are, is always going to be not flesh and blood. But it still gives us enormous benefits. So we can talk to someone now through Skype, who may be on the other side of the world, and we can see their face, they can see our face, and we couldn't do that previously, or it cost a fortune. But the crucial point is, none of this interferes with our option, anytime we like, to do things in the real physical world. And one of the things I talk about in the book is, it's not a choice of social media versus real life. The two interlock and interact. I mentioned Foursquare. It's a place where you check in and you tell people where you are. I checked mm -hmm. in before we started the interview. A few months What'd ago, you tell people? I said I was about to do a great interview with you on your show. Oh, but who are you checking in with? Uh, my friends all over the world who are interested in this. Really? Yes. But here's the point. Okay. A month or two ago, I was in a restaurant. This is a true story. With a friend of mine having dinner, and we checked in from the restaurant. And uh, about an hour or two later, I got an email from someone who had been in the restaurant about an hour earlier. We just missed each other. This is a guy I hadn't seen since the late 1970s in my PhD program. He was having dinner in that same restaurant. If I had just been there a little earlier, I would have met this guy, and now we are back in touch. So that's the point. One thing facilitates the other. Talk to me about the connection uh, between new media, social media, and politics. It's a very profound connection. Back in 2008, the Republicans were completely out to lunch when it came to social media. McCain barely knew how to use a computer. His staff didn't have a clue. Mm. One of the reasons why Obama did so well is that the Democrats back then did understand how to use it. They used Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Back in 2004, when Howard Dean was the internet candidate, 
He didn't get the nomination, and I think the main reason was there was no Twitter or YouTube. That's how new all this stuff is. In 2012, everything has changed because the Republicans and the Democrats are equally savvy about social media. Up in Massachusetts, for example, Scott Brown knows what he's doing. Senator Scott Brown. That's right. So are you saying basically in modern media, excuse me, in modern campaigning today, you cannot really, no matter what state you are in, or you run nationally, you can't really be successful fundraising, organizing, getting people out to vote, doing what you need to do without being really good at this. Yes, and I disagree with people. You sometimes hear critics ranting and raving about there's too much money in politics. This assumes that hypothesis that there's too much money in politics, that people get brainwashed by what they see on TV. However, survey after survey shows that people make decisions based on what they and their friends and their family think. People are much more influenced by that than some slick ad on television. So it doesn't matter whether Obama has $100 million, and, you know, Romney has, you know, $150 million. What counts in the end is how effectively they get their message out to people who can talk to each other about that and make their decision. By the way, folks, if you're watching this before the election or after the election, this, this information will be uh, just as relevant. By the way, finally, before I let you go, Professor, at Fordham, you te teach what subjects? Well, I teach this, uh, right. social media. I teach a writing workshop, which, which I love. I teach courses on the history and philosophy of communication and media. It's a great gig because I it's teach what I like. <laughs> and it's a great school. It is. Terrific place. The book is uh, New New Media. The author is Dr. Paul Levinson, and the publisher is Penguin Academics. Paul, it's great to have you with us. My Appreciate pleasure. It. Thanks for coming in. Stay right there. This is Steve Adubato coming to you from the Tisch WNET studios right here at Lincoln Center. You can see behind me. We'll be right back right after this.